this church a long, long time ago, before I was probably even thought of, had a list somewhere of all the names of individuals who were miraculously healed. We can sit here tonight and we can feel challenged. But you realize that's not enough. We need to put actions behind our belief. We need to put actions behind our prayers. You know how many times I've heard people say, well, that challenged me. That sermon challenged me. That book, Radical, challenged me. But probably nine times out of ten, somebody will admit that something challenged them spiritually. But it is one thing to feel challenged. It is something entirely different to take the challenge. We can feel challenged. Oh, I've been pricked in my heart. Yes, I need to work on that area of my life. But do we go home and work on that area of our life? Like, really sit down and work on that area of our life that we need to work on. Whenever I'm preaching, I make it a point. I want to give it all. And the reason being is, I can have the Word of God. I can have the message. That person might be quaking in their pew and maybe gripping the pew that their knuckles are white because God's dealing with their heart. But you realize at that point, if we shut down the service and they go home, they're feeling challenged. But unless they get it to the altar and make it real, it's never going to stick. They know the feeling, but they're never going to make the commitment. The altar is where they're going to make the commitment. That is where they're going to respond to how God is dealing with their heart. It's going to be there where they make the decision. They're not just going to be challenged, but they're forced to make a decision. Either they are going to, just like God deal with them, or they are going to change. The same is true of us when it comes to having signs and wonders. It's one thing to feel challenged. It is an entirely different thing to take up the challenge. Why? Because it's harder. To be challenged means that we know that there's something we need to work on, that there's something we want to change within ourselves. To take the challenge is to change. What are we going to do Now, in my own personal life, I'm tired of feeling like a powerless Christian. I really am. I'm tired of not really seeing signs and wonders follow me. I am tired. And if we are really going to see God move, it's going to come down to you and me. Now, what are we going to do for God? If we really want to see signs and wonders occur, is going to begin with each one of us. It's not going to start with the pastor. It's not going to start with the council members. It's not going to start with uh, the Sunday school teachers. It begins with you and me. At the end of this life, you and I will have to give an account of ourselves to God. Not for what they taught us or didn't teach, but how we responded to it. How we responded to the Word of God, to what we knew. What are we doing? The early church had signs and wonders following them all the time. Why? Because they stepped out in faith. They allowed God to use them. We need to be willing to allow God to use us. We need to get to the point where we're tired of being a tireless Christian. Where we're not having signs and wonders following. Maybe you're seeing that all the time. I'm not. I don't see some, lay my hands on people every day and see God heal them. I don't, I don't see that every day. Not in my own life. Not like I want to. We are living in an area where there's a church on practically every block. And we do have something special that not every church has. That is the presence of God. But it is the power of God that makes the difference between us and every other church in the community. 
You know, there's another church in the community that may experience the, path, the presence of God, but are they experiencing the power of God? We have it on our sign out there, Miracle Revival Church. When was the last time we've seen a miracle in our hands? When was the last time we've seen a miracle happen in the church, in our personal life, away from here? Like I said, I'm not attacking the church tonight. I'm not attacking us individually. I just want to challenge us, and this is what I felt God laid on my heart. Even I have been dealing with this for a little while. I'm like, I'm tired of being a, a powerless Christian. I want to see more signs and wonders follow. I want to see pray over people and they get healed miraculously. If somebody comes into Walmart with a shriveled up arm, to lay hands and pray and have that arm completely restored and that hand completely restored. Or maybe they come in with a hook on their hand and God miraculously grows back their hand right there. Or maybe they come in in a wheelchair and God miraculously heals them. In my own personal life, I know that even at work, I there for the longest time when I first got my assistant manager, I couldn't tell you how many times she pulled me aside and accused me of pushing my religion on people, which I wasn't. I had one Jehovah Witness come against me. He wanted free stuff and accused me of pushing my religion on And all of a sudden after that, I couldn't tell you how many times I got pulled aside. Stop pushing your religion on people. But people cannot deny the power of God when signs and wonders happen. They cannot. And that is going to make the difference. For the true church of God, we are living in a world where there are so many liberal churches that are going closer and closer to the way of the world. We look at our own community and there's a church on every block. But what's going to set us apart, what's really going to bring revival, is when we see signs and wonders start happening. And we need that in our own community. We really, really do. We have strongholds of the enemy in our own community. You, it should be an old thing of the past, but even in a recent newspaper, they had that, what are we going to do with this epidemic of drugs? We've been dealing with that for how many years? There's only one thing that's going to break that chain. There's only one thing that's going to make the difference. And that is the power of God. But we can pray all we want to wear blue in the face. But what are we doing to go out and make a difference. What are we doing to tear down that stronghold? I am not diminishing prayer in any way. We need it. That's where we receive the power. That's where we go and get refreshed. But we cannot stop there. We need to have signs and wonders following us. Those are the signs of the true church. When you look at the early church, did people come against them? Absolutely, from the very beginning. But what do they say about the man that was healed of the gate beautiful? We can't tell them, deny them the fact that it happened. Everyone knew this man. They knew him sitting there for years and years. Only thing we can do is threaten him not to preach in the name of Jesus. People cannot deny the signs and wonders happen. Those are evidence of the true church. What are we doing to see it in our own life? We need to stop making excuses. We need to stop being complacent. We need to step out of our comfort zone. And we need to step out in faith that we may see the sick healed, the demon possessed delivered, and even greater things than I'm sure we can aid of our dream or imagine. Anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add? Like I said, just reiterating, this wasn't a bashing church, it wasn't a bashing individual. I hope I challenged us. This is something I have been looking at myself for quite a while even now. I want to see signs and wonders follow me. Not because of who I am, but it's because of who God is. And there's a lot of hurting people out there. There are a lot of faiths out there. There's a lot of churches out there. But it's going to be the signs and wonders that make the difference. They're evidence of the true church of Christ.
last chance. Anybody else have anything they want to add? Anything they want to say? If not, let's bow our heads in the name of service again. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Lord, even right now, Lord, I pray that you just be with our hearts, Lord, like never before. I pray that we're challenged tonight and that we take up the challenge, Lord. The signs and wonders would follow us. And if they're not following us, Lord, if they are following us, Lord, I pray that even greater numbers would follow us. That you would be magnified and glorified, Lord. For, Lord, we just want people to see you through us, Lord. We want to see you move in this last hour. We want to see a revival, Lord. We want to see our church grow. Lord, may we be your hands extended like never before. And may we step out in unwavering faith, waiting to see what you want to do in our midst. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus.